Welcome, everybody, to the Into the Geekverse podcast. My name is Zach. And I am Daryl J. Cunningham. Hey, man. I'm so happy to have you on here. We've been trying to collab for, like, what? We, the first time I met you was at You you People? Was that the I first time? I think it screening? was You People. Yeah. yeah for the that Netflix was a while film. ago. Yeah. Forever, over a year now. Over a year. And we're finally able to collab and have you on the first episode of Into the Geekverse, where we talk everything, movies, TV, games. We very, per, pretty much just highlight the industry for the month that we're talking about, which today is May. We're talking about what movies are coming out in May, what's kicking off the summer. We got an interview to play on here. And also, we just get to know a little bit more about Daryl over here, who is like someone I look up to. I like see all your stuff on social media, man. Oh, man I see thanks. what you're doing. I remember there was one day, um, I think you were doing something for like a Dungeons and Dragons at like a... Do you yes, know th- yes. It's a, it's a cool um, Snakes and Lattes. Yes. It's such a cool spot. Such I've been cool there. Spot. I've been there once. I dropped my wife off or something. But I remember I was sitting there just like watching TV. And I'm like, I fucking know that guy. <laughs> I, I just met him a couple months ago, and it, it was really such a cool experience to see that, and also just meet you. You know, yeah. usually when you go to a screening, everyone's quiet. They don't talk to each other. They're just like, right. They just walk past you. Yeah. yeah you everyone know? just ignores it's you, and it's like you were the first person that you're, you reach out. Hey, I'm Daryl. I'm Zach, and it, it just hit off from there. You know, our yeah. personalities kind of hit, and every time we run into each other at screenings, it's always a great conversation. Uh, Rebel Moon. Uh, yes. Part one. <laughs> Did you watch part two yet? I have not. It's on Netflix. Yeah, it's, so I haven't seen it. Yeah, don't it's don't waste, watch it. It's a waste of time. Oh, man. It made me. It made me hate the first part. And the first one was rough to get through. Yeah. So n- just wait for the director's cut. Okay. I'm hoping that's better, and then I'll let you know if it if it is better. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Keep me up to date on this stuff. <laughs> but uh, with that said, let's roll that intro. So how this podcast is going to start? Since it's the first episode, we're trying to find its footing. I want to let the audience get to know my guest, you know? So I got a couple questions for you. All right. Who are you, Daryl? What do you do? And what do you hope to do in this industry? Oh, tough question. Starting this off strong. Okay, uh, well, I am Daryl J. Cunningham. I moved to Arizona about three years ago, actually. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm here. I work on with 3TV, Arizona's family. Uh, I'm a host of uh, our Your Life Arizona, which is a lifestyle show yeah. that airs Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. live. Yeah. Um, it, I get to go out and just experience Arizona. And the beautiful thing about that is I'm doing and trying different things and trying to just really get out and learn where I live, but also introduce people who've been in Arizona or new to Arizona, cool things to try do. I always say lifestyle is so much more than just yeah. lifestyle, just fashion and food. Mm-hmm. You know, it's your physical health, your mental yeah. health, just your everyday life. That is your lifestyle. So if I can help in any way of doing that on the show, that's like my goal is to make sure I bring that every single day that somebody can say, yeah. I learned something. I so. love that because I, I see that in everything you post and everything. Anytime I get to watch one of your segments, I see that same thing. And I like that you're doing the lifestyle thing. So for our Arizona audience, I'm curious, like what's yes. something recently that you would be like, oh, someone has to go and do this or try this or it could be a restaurant. It yes. could be fashion. It could be something to the point of making yourself feel a little bit better, a little bit more healthy. You know, what's take like, time for yourself. Yeah. Uh, I just did a story, uh, Arizona Outdoor Fun. It's where you go and do ATVs, UTVs, insane experience. Where's it at? It's out in uh, Black Canyon. Oh, okay. So it's, it's not, a drive. It's by the Pie Place. You okay. know that famous Pie Place? Mm-hmm. It's literally right next door. Huh. They have so much land, so many trails. It is such a cool experience. Really? And I'm, I'm from the East Coast. I mean, yeah. we do have that out there, but out here you have the land yeah. to really do it. Such a cool experience. And it's for everybody, your, your significant other, your family, your friends. You go out there, you just have a really good time, and you learn so much more about Arizona. Oh, I love that. So definitely check that out. We have a, we have a wedding to go to soon, and it's up there. So maybe on the way back, me and my wife will have to hit it up. Crazy thing, it was a bridal it. party there. Oh, was it? Yes. They, oh. were all, they all came to ride the ATVs. I, I, so it's crazy. It's a cool experience. I'm not an ATV mm-hmm. guy. I'm a UTV because it's like it drives yeah. like a car, steers like a car. Mm-hmm. So much fun, dude. Dang, man. I, I should have hit you up uh, a couple weeks ago because I was planning like my friend's bachelor party. Uh, and I, uh, that sounds like something he would have absolutely enjoyed. We're still so doing cool. something cool out in Queen Creek, but that's awesome. Yeah. I love to hear that. So with that, though, this is a movie. This yeah. is geek. We're being geeks. Yes. What's your favorite movie, man? Favorite movie of all time? All time. All that's time. a tough one, man. I'm glad I'm on this thing because I feel safe. This is my yeah, space yeah. to it's be a, a real space, geek. Man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. To let it all out. My favorite movie of all time. That is tough. Yeah. I will say one okay. of my favorite movies is Crash. Crash? Really? Yes. So you were a fan that it won Best Picture that year. Crash was such an amazing movie. Okay. I think it was. It's great. I, it has so many layers to mm-hmm. it. And it shows us as human beings and what everyone goes through yeah. and how you handle situations. And it makes you look at yourself to say, okay, I could do better. 
you know, if you saw yourself in some of those characters yeah. and how they acted, you look at yourself and say, you know what, I can do better. And so Crash is one of my favorite movies. See, and that's why I love movies because I'm gonna be honest with you and like talking with people, I hear so many people call it the most overrated movie of all time, oh, Crash, man. and the most overrated best picture winner of, win of all time. And I remember finally watching it probably like five, six years ago and being like, I don't, I don't get it. Like it was a good best picture win. Yeah. I, like I, I didn't mind it. There's a lot of great movies that year just like it is at every Oscars. Right. But I love to hear that because you know, I every time I go and see a movie, even a movie I hate, like we were just talking about Rebel Moon. Someone out there thinks that's the best movie in the world. Right. And that's their favorite film of all time. And that's okay. I think that's the beautiful thing about yeah. it. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Yes. Now, do you know what my favorite movie is? If you don't, it's okay. Um, hmm. Have you said it? I, I might not. Not, not you today. You might not have not said today. it. Yeah. So, What's your favorite movie? I got, I got a top three. Okay. My favorite one of all time. And I say it's my favorite for a lot of reasons. It was one of the first films that I remember ever seeing, which is Toy Story. Okay. Toy Story is incredible. Do you love Toy Story? Toy Story is really amazing. Okay. So we're, we're on good we're on terms the same here. Page. Yeah. If was that he, your favorite movie? Yeah. It's my favorite movie. Oh, now. it came out so subtle. I thought it was going to be like a little grand, <laughs> now, like Toy Story. Now, now, if you didn't like it, you'd have to leave that's right it? now. That's it? Yeah. The, that's, that's the it. exit one there. Yeah. I'm not joking. I don't dude. know about the fourth one. <laughs> Ah, man. You want to argue about it right now? <laughs> Toy it, Story 4 is fucking great. I, I Point blank, it's dude, a fucking I great think, movie, man. I think we need to leave these originals alone. I, I so you're not a fan that I'm not a fan one. of keep making movies. Like, that was our childhood. Yeah. That's what was amazing yeah. for us. Let's allow other creative writers, directors, yeah. to bring something new to the world. I appreciate it, though. It's mm -hmm. that nostalgia feeling. So that. Do like, you Ooh. like 4 at all, or do you just think it was... I just thought that we could have... It would have been okay without 4. I can understand you that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I was okay. Okay, fair <laughs> I, enough. I was, I was good. For me, I, I remember when it was announced, I was just like... Uh, uh, right. 3 ended perfectly, and I was so nervous, and then they introduced this piece of trash, Forky, and I went and watched the movie, and I fell in love with it. And okay. it was... I, I've said it is that Toy Story is like that franchise that any time I've watched one of the films, like when they first came out, it was like that perfect moment for me and what was really needed. And like yeah. Toy Story 4 was kind of that changing of time. Like Forky, or not Forky, Woody is learning, huh, I'm not needed here anymore. What's my next purpose? Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, that's where I was going through. I was like, what's my purpose? What's my next purpose? And it just really hit me it hard. Connected so with you. I, I understand it. It's okay, though. You like the first Toy Story. No, we'll I, st good I still it. love it. Yeah. I think every message in Toy Story always hits. Mm -hmm. I could have just lived without knowing that's that where, there was a fourth one yeah. ever being made. But I did watch it. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. The message is powerful. Yeah. There's not one Toy Story movie that you didn't feel something on mm -hmm. the inside. That's why so I get it. Five I love it. Gotta have that same thing, man. Like they gotta bring five, something back with five because yeah. that is like, where are you going now? Yeah, I you told know? my wife I was like, if I go and see five and then I don't come home after the screening, just assume that like I just you ended up like, driving off of cliff. You didn't like it. <laughs> no, like yeah, it. yeah no. exactly. Okay, man. So you got that. Yep. Throw out a couple others. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street's one of my favorite movies of all okay. time. Second favorite. Love Martin Scorsese. And then number three is the first Indiana Jones. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Just that perfect quintessential Yo. adventure film. I've never seen an Indiana You've Jones movie. <gasps> okay. Do you? Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yes, this, this, never. No, no, no. this is perfect. So here, we're, I'm throwing you on the spot right Okay. Here. So. Neither is my wife. Okay. She refuses to do this. They don't they don't stand out to me. No. It doesn't that's catch that's me. okay. She tells me the same fucking yeah. thing every single time. <laughs> we got a, a poster of it in our living room. And she just she's like, It's the that's yours. It's up there. Like, I yeah. love you. You can display it. I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get Okay. So we're we're also starting a podcast called Flicks and Friends, okay? Okay. Where I'm going to make people watch something that they've never watched before. And same thing for me. Right. And then bring them on and talk about it with their first I like experience. That. So you do you want to do Raiders of the Lost Ark? I'm open okay. to it. I've just never set the okay. time aside to see it well, because it never stood out to yeah. me. It was never something that I was like, oh my God, I got to go see Indiana Jones. Well, now we're going to set this yeah, time aside. I'll, go, I'll do, do it. it. I'm all about that stuff. Yeah, this I, I will give everything a chance. came from my friend who had never seen Harry Potter. He's never seen Harry Potter, Lord I mean, of the Rings. I literally just saw it two years ago. Do you like it? All the Harry Potter, yeah. I fell in love with it. Oh, sweet! Yeah, I love. But what I about uh, Fantastic Beasts? Did you watch those yet? I They're, did catch up on those. Those like, are a little different. They're not to me what I thought, but they weren't bad. Yeah, that's kind of like, how I felt. It's, too. it's enjoyable. It was yeah. good. I didn't watch all the Harry Potter till the first Fantastic Beasts was coming out. I went back okay. and finally like binged them all because I'd only seen like one and two. Okay, and I I loved them. So yeah, okay, it was good. sweet. So we got your favorite movie, yep. man. Crash. Crash. Favorite television series. 
CSI Miami. Ooh, okay. Yes, I that love was. It. I I have the DVD set. Hey, literally, man. dude. That's like, how you I know it's great. Love CSI Miami. I used to. I wish I could have been CSI agent out there trying to yeah. save the world. But that show was so good. It, to some people, they thought thought it was corny. You know, because the shots. You know, he'll just be standing there, and the sun's gl- like beaming on him, and then the uh-huh. camera's just circling around him, and he's just like. That was just so good. It I was love such that. a good. That was such that. a great show. My my wife is obsessed with like all those different CSI, uh, Miami, Criminal Minds, uh, you, Law you and name Order, it. SBU, Law and Order. Dude, love it. I, I hear that damn theme song. It's so good every day in my house. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, and it's a comfort show too. It it's is. always interesting to watch. And I find myself where like I'm not invested. I don't know all the characters right. or anything like that. But I find myself sitting there watching it with her, and I'm like know what's going on here but this is awesome I, I love to hear that man i love it's to hear that different stuff for you to know my favorite television series breaking bad of all time i love breaking bad Have okay you watched breaking bad dude i've never seen breaking bad oh, that's another one yeah, that's another I, I one that i was watching. like okay i need to sit down mm-hmm. and watch it but i haven't set the time to mm-hmm. watch it it's one of those shows that is very hard to get into like mm-hmm. the first season's very slow and you're always wondering like what's, what's the hype on this and i remember thinking the same thing and the only reason i watched it is i had a teacher who told me they would give me extra credit to watch it this is in high school and she's like if you just watch it i'll give you extra credit i'm like okay okay binge the whole show in like a week and a half because i wanted that extra credit because i was not doing good in her class <laughs> and then me and her became like best friends about this like uh my dad went to nevada yeah nevada, no new mexico sorry that's mm-hmm. where it's at they have a whole store for it and he brought back like oh, fake wow. crystal meth and it's so like it's a real thing yeah it's, a popular it's, dude, thing. it's huge out there if okay. you if you get a chance the the house that they used for filming some yeah. old cranky lady lives in it now and she'll just sit outside and scream at people like is that a part of the show no oh they she just bought it afterwards to just like i don't know scream i guess so so it's interesting man it it is (laughs) but uh but that's our guest daryl man that that, that, let's get into the main topic of this geek first time man we're talking about movies coming out in may then we're going to talk about tv shows coming out in in may and some video games coming out in may Mm -hmm. now starting off this movie's list uh we got the fall guy which uh as of we are recording this and when you guys are watching this it's already out and we're gonna watch it this week looks awesome looks amazing ryan gosling emily blunt uh david leach who did like deadpool 2 bullet train he's just this kind of seems like the love letter to stuntmen it does and he used to be a stuntman which is like the best of perfect worlds. yeah it looks like a romantic comedy it's got that action it's a mixture of everything yeah are you excited for this one i really am that's the one i've been looking forward to Mm -hmm. honestly i was like this is one of those feel-good movies and Ryan Gosling is just on top right now. Yeah. Like, he, he's on top. This dude is on top in everything he touches right mm-hmm. now. So it's like, I haven't seen anything bad. You know, he can skyrocket. You know, it's like, oh, snap, this guy, he's yeah. really good. If people didn't know who he was, now you know who Ryan Gosling is. Exactly. And I've, I've always liked him as yeah. an actor. But, like, over the last five, six years, I've really, like, if he signs on for a project, I'm like, I don't care what it's about. I want to watch I will, it. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Do you know he has a band, by the way? I didn't know that. Yeah, my See, friend told that. me that, and he, he found it out because he was watching some movie, and it, it, at the credits, it said Ryan Gosling and their band. And so their music's actually pretty good, Not man. too bad. No, I guess you see it in Ken, though. You know, he was the... Uh, I actually liked his voice in Ken, I too, man. Too. I was like, dang. But again, he was a part of the Mickey Mouse Club. Yeah. So it's like, okay, well, this guy had some pipes to sing anyway. Mm-hmm. So it was nice to see him use it in a role like that. Exactly. And then Emily Blunt awesome dude Love she can't her. do any wrong yeah did you watch the oscars this year by any chance i any watched snippets oh, i did not get to did watch all of it their banter that they had with one i another? didn't see them i saw his performance though oh dude, <laughs> so that, that was dude, it that performance yeah. was great was there so was good. a they had a nice little part where they were bantering with one another she was talking about oppenheimer he was talking about barbie and how okay. like it, yeah. it's really clever and funny but that just that sliver of banter and chemistry i was like Oh my God, I can't wait for the Fall Guy. Fall Guy's going to be amazing. so good. So, and got, you're right, a love letter to stuntmen. You know that they won like a, is it a Guinness World Record yeah. for the amount of roles? roles yeah. and the, like this movie, I think it's going to be like, I think it's going to catch so many people off guard mm-hmm. of how good it's, it actually is. So will this be the movie that gets the Oscars to announce a best stuntman or best they stunts have to. award? Because I mean, you got to think, all the movies we've loved, If when Marvel was on top, I think mm-hmm. they still are on top. I do too. They're just regrouping and rebuilding. Mm-hmm. All these superheroes, all these stars that we love, they have stunt doubles. You know what I'm saying? All the time. So we got to start. And all these other action-packed movies, you got to understand, these stunt doubles are making it look like 
the actors we love. Yeah. They're, they're, they're actually going out there, putting themselves on the mm-hmm. line. like that. Some of them are. Yeah. But I think we do need to open up and start, like, praising these stunt doubles because yeah. they are killing it. They're bringing stuff to life that, like, even if a film's, like, heavy visual effects. Right. Like, you go and see um, Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise is jumping off cliffs and oh, doing Tom all that Cruise. stuff. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, like, incredible because it's still visual effects. Yeah. But what he's doing and then... John Wick like everyone thinks Keanu Reeves is doing everything Keanu Reeves not jumping out of a building and surviving like no. that, that is his stunt double right. or even the you saw four right yes. okay yeah, when yeah. he gets thrown down the stairs that is not Keanu Reeves right like that is his, stunt, his stunt double, double. yeah and I, I love, like, it's little things like that that bring everything to life. Um, and to kind of just jump ahead, uh, I know we have a couple films to talk about, but uh, Furiosa. If we're talking about action yeah, and stunt doubles, be, if, you go, high. Yeah, if you look at Fury Road, I, I mean... I know there's a ton of visual effects, but the car chase, all the jumping between cars, like it just looks insane and intense. And Furiosa looks more. Yeah. Are you a fan of Mad Max? Are you excited for Furiosa? I am visually. I love stuff that catches you off guard. Yeah, you know, like Dune. Oh, visually yeah. beautiful. Yeah, but are like, we gonna argue about Dune love- Part Two right now? Two? No, we no. don't need to argue about two. We do not need to argue about two. I have a lot of feelings about two, but it was visually beautiful. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And it was it a lot of stunt real. doubles in that yeah. stuff as well. Yeah. So I think Furiosa is going to be amazing. I think it, it looks beautiful. Um, I'm excited to see. I don't really want to go in with any expectations. Me too. So I'm trying to not say, like, oh, my God, I want this to be so good. Mm-hmm. So I'm going in with no expectations with that one. That's how I kind of feel. Uh, I did the same thing with Fury Road. Like, yeah. I liked Mad Max up to that point, but I was never like, oh, my God, this is the best franchise in the world. Right. And then I watched Fury Road, and I was like, that was really good. But I, And I remember leaving Fury Road, and I kept thinking about it. I'm like, this is a really unique movie. And I remember I was so entranced to go and watch it again. I went and saw it the next day. Then I went and saw it like a week later. And I'm like, this movie's fucking great. And, okay. and I'm hoping Furiosa is the exact same way. You got Anya Taylor-Joy in this yeah. thing. You got Chris Hemsworth, man. Who look, they look amazing. Yeah, like, Chris really, Hemsworth's really big good. fake nose. Yeah, like, it kind of doesn't even look like him. If you really look at it, it looks like they really did a good job of yeah. us not knowing it's him. Yeah, I saw my my uh, film drunk, another person out here in Arizona. Yeah. He, he posted, uh, he's like, this is one of my most anticipated movies of the summer because Chris Hemsworth finally gets to be Australian in a film. And I'm like... Look at that. Yeah. We dig it. You're not we'll wrong. Roll with so, it. All right, rolling back to the start of May, we got Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. You a Apes fan? I am. I love that that series. Dude, Caesar, the, dude. Dude, man. the last trilogy. So good. Oh, perfect. Which one was your favorite? You got Rise, Dawn, and War. Dawn's my personal favorite. That second one just like hit all Dawn the Dawn right was notes. good. I like Rise. Yeah, Rise yeah. is the start of it all. It was the start of it all. Yeah. And I thought like, wow, for the first time, I'm excited for what's to come next. Yeah. That was the set. It's set in mm-hmm. stone. Like, whoa, this is a good start in this in this franchise. Yeah. I saw um, my favorite moment in that movie is when they're in the zoo and the guy's like tasing me. He goes, yeah. no. And it's just like, I remember seeing that. And it was like the theater just went silent. It's insane. Yeah. And Kingdom looks awesome. 300 years later is Crazy. where it's taking place. Caesar's dead. Caesar's dead. Dang but it. now you have this this new... I, I haven't seen a trailer for this. I'll yeah. be honest. I don't know a lot you about it. No. Okay. Does it look good? To I, me, I think it's a fresh start. Yeah. But I'm not going in with any expectations with this one either. Yeah. But it looks like it's a fresh start. Okay. And it's like, you. I think we'll feel Caesar in there. But I don't feel like what we're going to watch mm-hmm. is the path Caesar wanted them to go on yeah it's gonna be so that's what i think it's gonna be about and i think i'm excited to see that that excites me because i love who they have doing the the mocap this time around i just yeah. saw that movie abigail the vampire one did you get a chance I to check seen that, that one out that little girl yeah was that good it was good i, I it. didn't the trailer didn't the tra- i did me. not like the trailer yeah the trailer did not drag like it didn't pull me in no the 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 movie is what did you ever see a ready or not or i didn't the, see ready or not did you yeah. like it it was good same directors same style everything okay. so if you like ready or not it's you'll like it's Abigail. one of those that, yeah. yeah okay it's bloody it's gory it's funny it's all that but there's this big doofus in there and he's actually playing the big evil kingdom ape yeah in this one so i was like okay i'm excited to see this is gonna be where they're going with that yeah. yeah good cast all that stuff and the director of this is going to be doing the live action legend of zelda film Oh, wow. So, so that's greenlit. Yeah, so if oh. he was signed on, like I have to imagine that Hollywood talks. If right. he did a good job with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, you got to imagine that he's coming in. And then they have the same writers as well from Which the last weird. trilogy. Yeah. So like, okay, I'm, I'm settled in. I'm some not trust. as worried. Yeah. There's some trust in It's there. not Disney out there making trying to make money and all that. There's so, some trust, you know. I'm all for that. So up next, the week after that, we have If. Have you heard of this one? John Krasinski's directed movie. It's about imaginary friends. This is with Ryan Reynolds. Yes. Yep. Yes. I saw the trailer for what this. What do you think? 
I don't know. Yeah. It reminds me of uh, what was that other movie? Um, dang it, there was another movie that looked exactly like that. I don't know if Ryan Reynolds was in that one too. Probably was. I think he was, but <laughs> it was like some universe, and it was like it looked like if I'm gonna have to find. Was it, it Fall Guy? Was it, it was it the video game one? It was the video yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Was Fall that Fall Guy? guy? I, no, wait. No, because Fall, Fall Guy is, is Ryan Rosman's no, what movie. Is it, what is it? Uh, um, that's um, what it was, but that's yeah. what it gives me with Free If. Guy. Free Guy. Free Guy. Is that's what, what it, it gives that me with That was fun. If. Yeah, that like was a that. fun movie. I was like, oh, this is fun. That's yeah. what I saw the If. I was like, okay, cool. That's a, It'd probably be a little fun That's movie. how I feel. I, I love John Krasinski. Yeah. I love what he did with Quiet Place 1 and 2. I thought those movies were excellent. Did you see the, the trailer for the Day Quiet? 1? Yes. Uh, no. You I have not watched it. I don't want to. You don't want to see These it? These are so short. The movies are so short. This one looks good. I yeah. like Day 1. I was like, whoa. Okay. It's in New see, York, right? It's in New York. Yeah, yeah I love Lupita, that. Like, the loudest city in yes, the world. Yes, in the man. world is, is silent. Oh, and that it, that's crazy. Yeah. That's a whole message right there. Yeah, and I and I like how they're jumping into that. I think yeah. that comes out in June or July. Yeah. So I can't it's wait. Be good. I can't wait. But uh, if looks cute, I was actually really excited for this one. It was first announced. I'm like, oh, an imaginary friends movie. Right. I used to watch Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Okay. So kind of like we this. all have a friend that we don't. Yeah. see. Yeah. But then I saw the trailer and I was like, it looks cute. Yeah. I'm hoping that there's something more to it. Because uh, A Quiet Place, I remember seeing the first trailer and I was like, that's a cool concept. Yeah. I hope the movie is good. And then I watched it and I was like, man, that was great. I'm hoping Ifs kind of the same way that maybe it's kind of like this Roger Rabbit type of style film mm. for the modern generation. Yeah. Uh, bringing these imaginary friends in. And I'm obsessed with Roger Rabbit. I love when they do that's the cartoons. That's a touchable in life. movie there. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully Ifs great, man. Up next, we have Back to Black. This is the new Amy Winehouse uh, film. Uh, I got to interview the stars for this, cool. the main star and the director. We're going to play that clip real fast, and then we'll talk about the film. Hey, my name is Zach. I'm with Zach Book Reviews. How are you both doing today? We're great. Hey, how, how are you? Good. How are you? Uh, I, I'm great. I'm great. I really enjoyed this movie, and this is one of those films that I didn't know a lot about Amy going in, and I felt like I left knowing a lot more about her, and... Thank you so much again for taking the time out of your day. So to kick this off, I want to know from both of you, Amy's grandmother was a huge person in her corner. And in industries like this, I feel like we need someone who's our inspiration, that person to push us. I'm curious for you both, who is this person to you and what did they do for you to inspire you to keep going or to get into what you're doing today? Wow, wow. that's, that's a tough question that I've not been asked before. Um, I get, you do I, it. for you me, do. it's definitely my mum, so okay. I, that's an easy one for me, yeah. I, I don't find that easy for me to answer because I have, I have complex family relationships, so I, I don't <laughs> know whether, I, I've had, you know, varying mentors through, through my life that I would probably say they've sort of guided me a little bit to this place. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stop I, there because I'm like, I don't even know where to go forward with <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> there, there's always a lot. I, I feel the same way. Like yeah. there's, there's certain people in your life that will kind of just push you into that direction and mm -hmm. really open up your mind to maybe different visions. And, you know, one of the things that really stuck with me in this film were the final words that Amy says, something of the likes of, I want to be remembered for being myself. Mm -hmm. The film left me thinking, well, what do I want to be remembered by? You know, whether it's in mm -hmm. film criticism or in film journalism. And I'm curious, what do you guys want to leave into this world? What do you hope with maybe this film or future roles or future films that you direct? I mean, you know, something like this is is a real sort of study in a way of where creativity comes from. And, and mm -hmm. that is always so interesting for me. And, um, and I feel like that has been sort of definitely a solid investigation through my, my film work. But... Um, I mean, I always, my legacy, I always think, is, is how my kids think of me, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. But in terms of, you know, work and, and films, I, f I do feel like this is quite an important movie for me. I love it, I love it. And for you, Marissa? Um, again, it's kind of, I guess it's split into two parts, isn't it, really? Like, as a person, just that, you know, I loved the people that I love well and that they, you know, the same, that I was loved, but... I think in terms of work, I guess, you know, it would be nice to be remembered as good. <laughs> That's a good place to start. You will be. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, yeah. your performance in this was fantastic. Oh, I was, thank I was you. like, who, who is this? So, oh, and one you. of the things I really loved in the film was you weren't afraid to just show one scene of two characters like bonding in a bar. 
Like, mm. th that's not something that I feel like a lot of biopics spend time on. Like, mm. they usually just gloss through or rush through very fast. Mm. So these small, intimate moments, I, I feel like, again, can get glossed over. What was an important moment for both of you that you were happy to show in Amy's mm. life mm. and that you were able to showcase to the audience? I mean, that, the scene you mentioned is probably the, the one of the most important scenes of the movie because... We, you know, I wanted to make this film through her perspective, and so I had mm -hmm. to feel like, in order for people to listen again to Back to Black, we had to understand who she was falling in love with. So the scene where it's, you know, a very long one take of the two of them at the bar, really, you start to sort of feel the synergy and the energy, and you start to feel them absolutely falling into each other. And so that was really important to, to have that work. So that's probably one of the most important scenes of the movie. Mm. Awesome. I love that. Well, thank you guys so much both for your time. They're wrapping me up, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. <laughs> nice to meet you, Zach. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right, and that was our interview with Sam Taylor Johnson and Marissa Abella. Uh, Daryl, are you excited for Back to Black? Are you a fan of Amy Winehouse? I, I honestly didn't know a lot about her, so mm -hmm. I hope when I watch the movie, I learn a little bit more about her. But I do like some of her music. I think her voice, it, it's she has such a beautiful, or she had such a beautiful voice. Well, she's mm -hmm. her music still lives on, so yeah. she has a beautiful voice. Uh, so I'm excited for the movie to figure out, okay, let's find out if I can learn a little bit more about Amy. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it's definitely interesting to me because I knew her music. I liked her music. I didn't know a lot about her life, but the surface level stuff. And after watching the movie, I kind of felt the same, but it made me more intrigued to go and look up stuff. There's like a whole documentary on her now that I want to watch. And one of the things that I was very intrigued with by this movie, and I'm not just saying this because I got to interview the star mm -hmm. and the director, is a lot of musical biopics kind of just go through the motions. They don't go in any deeper. And I'm not saying that this film goes deep or anything. It is kind of surface level on certain attempts. Right. But it actually feels, and I mean this as a compliment, it does feel like an extended music video, but one that's actually trying to tell a full story. And it's basically the story of how did she come up with that debut album that everyone loved. And I liked seeing that. Like you see this whole sequence, like 20 minute sequence, and then how did it affect her song Back to Black? How did that inspire that? Then the, so on and so forth. So it's an interesting thing. I can't recommend it for everybody. I've seen some Amy Winehouse fans like absolutely hate on the idea of a movie. And I understand people are very protective. It's their idol, yeah. Yeah, so I get it. Like I'd be the same way with a lot of musical icons that I'm obsessed with. Like how are you going to handle this? But I, I thought it was good. I think people I like hate the way on it you worded that. That yeah. was beautiful, like an extended music video. Yeah. That, to me, that just drew me in. Like, see? okay, I want to go see this yeah. movie now. I've learned though, Zach, I don't go into theaters with any expectations mm -hmm. anymore. It's a good way to. You're going to hurt your feelings mm -hmm. or, or be disappointed by having all these high expectations. Because yep. it, it's like, at, at one point, you're going to get let down. Did Dune do that for you? Dune Part 2? <laughs> Dune 2 did do that just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Visually, overall, beautiful mm -hmm. movie. But there was just a little bit in there. But I'm hey, excited for and, and I get that. I've been trying to do that lately where either I don't watch a trailer anymore or I'll only watch the first trailer if I, if I have to. You know, I got to cover stuff. I got to... Right. bring in people and talk about films and uh i remember the last film that really taught me to stop watching every trailer was the batman okay i saw i watched every trailer every teaser every clip and when i went and saw the movie i was like always waiting for that clip or that thing i saw i'm like oh i remember he did this to someone it's coming up when's it coming <laughs> up and then like towards the end of the film I'm like there it is i saw it so i'm trying to do my best to do that and then obviously it checks your expectations at the door like no matter how excited right. you are and then it takes a film like, because sometimes you'll walk out of a movie and be like, man, I love that. And then you think about it for a couple of weeks and you're like, I still liked it. But did right. I actually love that movie? Yeah. Would I go back and rewatch it again? Like, uh, I think one for me this year was, uh, I, I still loved it, like walking out of it. But um, Godzilla X Kong was like, it, I, I walked out and I was like, man, that movie is freaking awesome. Right. And I love this movie. And then I walked away. I'm like, okay, yeah, there's a lot of issues. That movie, that movie's fucking still awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That one left me in a visually beautiful movie. Yeah. <laughs> visually beautiful movie. All right. We'll leave it at that, man. <laughs> uh, next up, we got The Strangers Chapter One. Are you a horror fan? Are you a fan of The Dude, Strangers Dude, I just franchise? saw the trailer for that yeah. this weekend when I went to go see Civil War. And I saw the trailer for that. I was like, Does it okay. look creepy? I haven't watched the trailer yet. It looks like you're finally finna low why they're doing what they're doing. Oh, okay. And so that's exciting to figure that out, okay. like how it started. Yeah. And I think that's the most important part is sometimes we pick up when they've been doing it for 30 mm -hmm. years. They've already been taking lives for 20, 30 years. But to learn now why, why? they started, 
That's okay. all we want to know. We just want to know why yeah. people do what they do. I'm interested because they filmed three films back to back. This one, and then we have another one coming out later this year, and then one that finishes off. Really? The so yeah. two are coming out this year? Yeah, and then a third one next year. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So I remember loving the first one. I wasn't a fan of the second one too much. Yeah. I wanted more from it. I haven't seen anything from this one because I've been trying to get excited for it. What you just said, though, I trust your enthusiasm. I'm hoping that I now be excited for yes, it. Yes, just don't go in yeah. with any expectations. Exactly. I'll think I'll, I'll think it can't be worse than the second movie. Right. It can't get it can't get worse. No. <laughs> Did you like Civil War by the way? I enjoyed Civil War. Very hard movie to watch. Very hard movie to mm -hmm. watch, but I think it reminded me a little bit of Crash. Yeah. Sometimes we don't like to see ourselves mm -hmm. played out in a movie. Yeah. And Civil War did a good job of kind of showing us how we look. Yeah. You know, as overall, not just one body of, of people, everybody, how yeah. we look. And I think they did a great job of doing that because you left the movie not being able to pick a side. And people want to yeah. pick sides. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I love that because so many people went into the movie being like, oh, my God, they're just going to get political. And to a certain extent, I don't think it was what anyone was thinking. Yeah. Like, it, it you don't not. know what the journal... You can make assumptions of what sides they're on. And right. what, but I love that they they never really did pick a side. You couldn't it's, pick a side. The the film's whole message is war is bad. Yeah. War is fucked up. And I like that they touched on every single right. aspect of that. So I love that. Such a good movie. Up next, we got Babes. I have not seen the trailer for this. It is a very is. smaller movie. It actually, I think it premiered at the Phoenix Film Festival. Okay. I didn't get a chance to see it. But how it was explained to me was Bridesmaids... Mm -hmm. But instead of the wedding, it's about two girls about to have a kid. And so how does their mm -hmm. lives change now? How does your best friend's life change now because you're about to have a child? And that kind of just hits right. I, right. I'm excited for that. Hearing that is kind of Bridesmaids. I think Bridesmaids is funny. Hilarious. And Hilarious movie. I'm wanting something like that. I want to highlight some smaller films. So if you're a fan of Bridesmaids, maybe check out I Babes. Love small, I love small yeah. films. I think those indie films and those artisan mm -hmm. movies, that is like where it's at. Yeah. That's well, where you get a lot of that good stuff. If we're talking about smaller films, there's another horror film coming out at the end of May called In a Violent Nature. This premiered at Sundance. Mm. It is a horror slasher film from the killer's perspective walking around the camp i saw that oh, yeah. i saw that that does look good yeah that i have heard i've heard it's a little slow okay but man is it brutal i heard it is gory bloody and it's basically just your friday the 13th movie you've been waiting for but just from that killer's that perspective so. kind of scary right we're, yeah we're trying to release a movie from the killer's right perspective <laughs> Dude, you know it's kind of intense you know what's funny before i started getting onto youtube and stuff um i wanted to try filmmaking first okay. and i wrote a script with one of my friends and the whole script was from the i was from the perspective of the killer so now i'm like i've been fascinated ever since i heard about the movie and i'm like huh they didn't steal my idea. I'm not saying that because it takes place in a forest. Mine took place in a town. Right. But uh, it kind of just brings me back that. And I actually like when it found the old script, I'm like, man, this thing was, this thing was crap. This but was I still like the concept and idea because right. I don't think we've ever seen that really before. I don't think we have seen, I mean, no, I don't think no. we've seen it from the killer's no, perspective. No, at least from a slasher. Like I guess some people could be like, like Silence of the Lambs to a certain You get extent. a little yeah. bit of their perspective, but... I mean, from yeah. the beginning of following him, why mm -hmm. he does all, like, yeah, no, I think this will be the first. It's going to be interesting. So it's so, going to be fun. Two more films to talk about, man. Mm -hmm. Garfield. Garfield. With Chris Pratt. I know this is probably Chris your Pratt most is, anticipated film with the whole year, right? Dude, I'm proud of yeah. Chris. Honestly, <laughs> Mario, now Garfield. Yeah. Lego movie, too. Lego the movie. He's been, this yeah. dude's been everywhere. Proud yeah. of him. Now, um, do you Garfield. Care? Do you care? I think it's going to be a good family movie. Yeah. I really do. And it's one of those times, sometimes you don't know a family movie is what you need to see until mm -hmm. you see it. Yeah. So uh, I'll probably wait till it's uh, streaming mm -hmm. and then I'll watch it. But, uh, you know, kudos to everybody who likes yeah. Garfield. That's my sister. Yeah. Huge Garfield fan. So she's probably like over the moon. She's like, if you get a screener for this, I he have has to a, go. He has a fan base. Oh, a seriously. huge fan base. He has a huge yeah. fan base. Garfield is popular. Yeah. So... so I haven't seen anything for this. I just know Chris Pratt's in it. I saw the trailer. Is it cute? I thought it was a cute movie. I was like, oh, okay, the family, like people who love Garfield will love this. Yeah. And kids who are introduced to Garfield, they'll love it. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it. It's a good <laughs> It's a good family movie. Okay. I'm down for that. And last movie of the month I want to talk about. Now, this technically was streaming in June for Netflix, but it okay. is going to limited release, and it's called Hitman. 
I have not seen anything from this. I'm keeping it that way. Uh, it's Richard Linklater, director of like Dazed and Confused, mm -hmm. and he's and Glenn Powell, who I absolutely loved from Glenn Top Gun. Glenn Powell, yes, dude. I just watched um, anyone, but, anyone you? but you. Uh, me too. Such a cool little rom com. Was, I love was, rom coms, yeah, dude. It was cute, and yeah. it was R rated too, which yeah. you don't see a lot of romantic comedies hit that R rating feeling. I, lo I loved it. Yeah. I thought that it kind of brought me back to the day where we had all those goofy rom-com yeah. movies that just made you feel good. You just hit play and like, oh, this is a good movie. Exactly. If we can keep more rom-coms coming, like yeah. I'm with it. Let's bring more. Now, what I've heard is that if you liked anyone but you, you're going to love Hitman. Hitman okay. from just, I don't, I genuinely do not know the story of this, okay. but it's based on a true story. It's Glenn Powell. He co-wrote it with Richard Linklater. He stars in it and Everyone I've talked to has said this is the best film of the year. So it's not a series. It's a movie. It's a movie. Okay. I thought it was a TV series. No. So it's a so movie. So I am full on in. premiered at a film festival last year to yeah. rave reviews. Sundance has like 90 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like 98%. Okay. Everyone I've talked to is like, this will probably be your favorite film of the year. And I'm like, well, he's, oh. he's hot right now too. Like yeah. he's right up there. And then he has Ryan. Twisters coming out yeah, later Yeah, Twisters look good. So he's, he's one of those people who's like... Everything he's touching mm -hmm. is just fire. So yeah. I'm with it. I'm I want to I wanna ask you, Marvel or DC, if he were to join like a superhero franchise, what would you want Glenn Powell to do? If he had to join something? Yeah. You got to choose. If I got to decide, I would say DC. Okay. Do you have a hero in mind? I don't have a hero in mind, but mm -hmm. I feel like he would be good to build the DC universe. Yeah. You get what I I'm saying? Like I, to a fresh start. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trusting James Gunn with what he's doing. I, I like he hasn't failed me yet. Uh, but again, I'm not going in with no expectations yeah. with this one. You're just hoping for the I'm best. I'm just hoping for the best. Uh, yeah. But no, because I grew up with DC. I, like, yeah. I was a DC kid. Mm -hmm. I the, the comic books, the cartoons. And then as you get older, you started and they're like, oh, Marvel is killing this with yeah. the movies. But they had such a beautiful run that I do not think they anticipated what comes next yeah. after they climax with Endgame. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like they thought, like, oh my God, what's what are we going to do next? And I now mean, they're trying to figure. Now that they're out. trying to figure out. We got rid of Kang now, so or, or we don't know if they're going to recast Kang or not. That I was looking forward to that. Honestly, yeah. I was like, dude, this we'll dude see. is killing it. I think Deadpool will push us in the right direction. Deadpool's going to go in the right direction, but that's just a one-off. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless they're going to tie that to an introduction to the a new universe or something, mm -hmm. I think Deadpool's just a one-off. It's going to be like oh. the, a good movie of the year. Really? You get okay. what I'm saying? I don't see it building another 10-year franchise. Can I tell you something? Yeah, I, tell I won't something. spoil anything. No. It's, yeah. Did I you see it already? No, no, no. no oh, no, I was going to say, what? <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> I wish, man. I love Deadpool. Um, I know the end credit scene. In Deadpool? Yeah. Insane. It's it's pretty big. It's is it pretty, huge? Yeah, it's pretty big. Is it? It's another connector. It's yeah. It's a connector. It, it's they're doing exactly what I want them to do. So they're doing it like how Thanos used to pop up in movies, and he would get us all interested and yeah. ready for the next yeah. movie. I promised I wouldn't say anything publicly, so I won't go as far as that. But they're they're doing exactly what I've told. Okay. said Marvel should be doing. Your end credit scene should go to the next film or the next you know right. film coming up or Introduce something us coming to up something. soon. Like I feel like every end credit scene's kind of been like, oh. We got this. Now we have this. Now we have this. Oh, we also have this we over here. We are left piecing it together. Yeah, and it's like there's no connective piece. Where like before it would be like, oh, your end credit scene is a scene from Civil War. Right. Okay, that's interesting. And then, oh, this is, uh, I remember like Thor the Dark World was a Guardians of the Galaxy set. Yeah. It's like, let's get let's get back to that. So yeah. I think I love that. Now, if we're getting back to that, I mean, I'm already excited for the movie. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to get a good end credit, that's all I want. Because Marvel never failed with their end credits. No. They got you excited for something. And yeah. I'm a huge Thanos fan. Like, I'm a huge Thanos yeah. fan. So when he put that gauntlet on and was like, mm -hmm. I'll do it myself. You you flipped? Yeah, yeah. I almost, I was yelling yeah, in my room. I was yeah. like, And yes. you, you were cheering for him. I was cheering for Thanos the whole time. <laughs> I'm disappointed he lost. I yeah. was literally, even in Endgame, I was still cheering for him. Damn. I was still Damn, cheering Darryl. for Thanos. Because he's not the villain. No. He's just misunderstood. Yeah. There you go. There, there you go, go, man. Going back to Glenn Powell real fast. Uh, DC, if I have him, uh, Hal Jordan. I want him to play oh, Green that's Lantern. A good one. Yeah, I'd yeah, love yeah. for him to do that. And then if we had to get him Marvel, cast him as Cyclops, man, for the X Men reboot. Yeah. He'd be Cy such a good no, Cyclops. No, I don't see Cyclops. No. What about no. Gambit? Do you Gambit. See I was going to say Gambit. Yes. If he could do the accent. Yeah, if he could do the accent, that Louisiana accent, yeah. then yes. But Cyclops. It's hard for me to see anybody but the guy that they had. Oh, James Marsden. Yes, yeah. it's it's so hard to he see. He was good it. casting. He was so good in it. Um, Glenn Powell. 
I kind of would want to see him as a villain if he came to Marvel. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Not a good, not a good person. I it'd be interesting. Not a hero. Yeah, I'd have to go down the lineup of what villains, but I I would like Marvel to see has him play so many villain. untouched villains that they have not even touched. I mean, I'm they have s such an archive of mm -hmm. villains that they could bring out, and I feel like the way they ended it and Thanos won the first one, we all knew that they were going to win. Yeah, in game. I feel like sometimes we don't need to know that they're going to win. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Let us believe that this, they might lose. Yeah. That's my theory for Fantastic Four, man. I really, I, yeah. I think, because uh, have you heard Galactus is probably going to be the villain? There's, have they confirmed that one yet? Or are they still uh, working it's, around it's it? It's pretty heavily. Okay. Like he, what did you think about it. the casting of Fantastic Four? I wasn't blown away by it, but yeah. I, I really liked it. No expectations. Um, that's my no, thing. Like yeah. I was like, oh, I like I like everyone casted. It's a oh, it's a now, great do ensemble. They have chemistry. I don't know. I got to see the movie. We're to gonna see find that. out. But uh, it takes place in a different universe, apparently. Yeah. Galactus. Does that mean they lose and then they get taken to the MCU or the Void or whatever yeah. the hell it's called? Uh, it's gonna be interesting. It man. is. I, I'm that's down be, for it. I'm, I'm ready so for open for it now. Uh, to kind of run down this, we're going to jump, jump into the TV. Yep. Uh, there, a lot of these shows, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know much about them. You so haven't you seen these either. shows, Zach? Some, man, TV's, on now. TV's pretty big. I like just sitting back and watching Modern Family over and over again. Modern Family's yeah. good. Abbott Elementary is amazing. I still have not watched it. You got You know I'm waiting. It. What season is on right now? Three? I think it's on um, one, two, three. I think Okay, three. so yeah. I'm waiting until three ends. And then I'm just gonna binge watch them. all of yeah, it. Yeah, because I hope it's three and not two. Yeah, because sitcoms if it's always not. make me sad when like you binge them and then it just yeah. like ends. And it's like I want that full thing where like Modern Family I've never watched before. So and now they, like it's all on there. So yeah, you have to wait. I have 11 seasons to go through. Yeah. So it's been you such a good time. time. But jump into this. We have uh, starting right. off the month Tales of the Empire. This is that Star Wars short series. Um, mm. I don't know if you ever watched Tales of the Jedi. It was a very interesting little short series they did last mm. or two years ago at this point. Mm -hmm. So Tales of the Jedi told Count Dooku before he turned to a Sith. Right. And Ahsoka, what if like kind of little stories about her. And I love how they did that. Tales of the Empire is kind of doing the same thing with some of the Sith Lords that yeah. we've never really touched on. Right. So I'm interested. Does that intrigue you by any chance? I'm interested. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah. Huge Star Wars fan. favorite movie. This is where I get to geek out. Yeah. Revenge of the Sith. And oh, a lot of people yeah. hated that no, one, dude, nah. and it's just like, dude, the people hated the prequels. I know. I mean, hated, and I was in love. Yeah, I was the one. That's the beautiful thing about movies. Yeah, you're gonna have people who hate it. You're gonna have people who love it. But the beautiful thing is, it got a reaction from everybody, everybody. just about. And so I enjoyed it. I loved it. Um, I want more of Darth Vader. I want us to do a series with Darth Vader or do That'd a movie. Cool. Let's see his reign. Let's see the you know the universes he's conquered. We've not really like mm -hmm. even got, we've not even touched. We've only touched the surface with Darth Vader. Yeah. And I feel like we need more Darth Maul. We need more from that. One thousand so percent agree. I want to see more from the villain side than always the hero. Yeah. And I think that's where they're dropping the ball. When they came out with uh, with Obi Wan Kenobi and everybody, Darth Vader showed up. Ratings were insane. Yeah, because people care about that's the all. They, that is what they you want to want see. You want to yeah. see Darth Vader destroy some stuff. You know, yeah. we Rogue can't do one. it. Rogue One's you, ending. When he <laughs> ended that thing and came down, that's topped it. Rogue One is one of the best movies that they have made. Honestly. I agree. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited yeah. for this. Okay, series. sweet. Yeah. yeah, man. Me too. Uh, they also put on the poster General Grievous is coming back, which I don't know I'm if with it's it. a bigger thing. I fucking love General I'm with Grievous. That. He's yeah. such a cool villain. Uh, after this, the last three episodes of X Men '97 come out. This Insane! Month. So excited! Yeah, I am not caught up. Uh, what? I, I watched the last one. I watched. Are you caught up? I'm all caught okay. up. Okay. Last one I watched was when Storm got her powers back, mm -hmm. and dude, I have. Been oh, you just one off then? Yeah, I'm yeah. Only one off. I'll watch tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you one that off. That way, I'm caught up. Yeah. But fuck, man, I, I didn't have expectations for this show yeah. as we've been talking about. And like I, I love the original animated show, but I'm like, is it gonna be really that good? Yeah. And I watched it. I'm like, holy shit, this thing's great. And then episode five hit, the one with Gambit. Mm. And uh, I watched it at work mm -hmm. on my lunch. And I turned around to my coworker and I had red eyes. And he's like, you okay? And I was like, fuck, man. X-Men 97 fucked me up. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it is hit great. You. It hit you. These three last three episodes. Was it's the last one be. good? I heard the last one the was last great. The last one was good. It's a okay. good. It's a good intro into what we're about to have. Okay. I don't know if Gambit's dead or not. I think he is. You know, because you can't. I, I mean, generally, I, I don't mean, know. how are you gonna kill Gambit yeah. in X Men? He but was then never killed. they have Cable. So does Cable do? I some didn't. Time you want to know the craziest thing? Huh. I did not know that was their son. Oh, you didn't, dude. I've watched all X Men the series as yeah. a child. I never knew that was their son. I found that out when Deadpool two came out. Uh, my friend did a whole history. That was like, oh, I never put two and two together. Holy shit! 
I did not know what it <laughs> yeah. did. My eyes was like, what? Yeah. Like, what? Isn't that cool? It's like, am I a fan? Like, yeah. how did I not know this? I love you know? that. I love Insane. That. So, no, beautiful. They, that, I just hate that we have to wait. Yeah, me too. But I love that they're teaching us that old school way of like, when something comes out, you have to wait every week yeah. or two we weeks to that. watch it. You need that to not get everything in such a quick it's yeah. like we always want stop the, talking about we it. do we always want that microwave experience and it's mm-hmm. like no give me the slow roast you know did you watch fallout at all or are you gonna fallout. i have not no? i've okay. not played fallout oh, okay. and i've not watched the new one so i hear that it. i'll love it's it really good because i haven't played it mm-hmm. so i'm like okay i'm gonna watch yeah. it i'm a fan of the games love the games and i love the show too so it it's works a, You're it's very, yeah it's a very well written show okay i was i've watched it twice i had a the first podcast we ever did on this feed was a our gaming podcast my friend who's my co-host, is the biggest Fallout fan. Okay. And so I, when I finished it, I had the screeners. And I was like, okay, come over. Let's do the first episode of Fallout. I'm going to have you watch the first six, then you'll finish it by yourself. And he watched it, and we binged the first six, and then he left. I'm like, huh, I should watch the next right. two again and just finish just it. It's sure. really good. I don't know what it's about, so but I'm going to check it out. Okay. I'm going to check it out. I think you'll I, like it. I it's know wild. absolutely nothing about Fallout. Did you Fallout. ever like Westworld or get into Never West- watched Westworld. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm a little behind on TV shows because hey, I got like a certain list that I like yeah. to watch that I have the time the for, time, yeah. and it's like, okay, but I'm all open for trying okay. new TV shows. All right, we'll do that. So running down the list, Bridgerton. You a fan of Bridgerton? The first one, yes. Okay. Once the original kind of cast kind of disappeared, it kind of, my attention disappeared. Okay. I didn't care for the show. Yeah. Season three is coming out. I don't hear any hype for it, so. I didn't even know season three was coming out. Same. Until like that first season was so good. Yeah. I'm not going to lie, I genuinely enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It kept you on your toes wondering, like, what is going on in mm-hmm. this time period? It was okay. pretty interesting to me. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Outer Range is on Amazon Prime, a Josh Brolin show, your boy Thanos. I heard the first season was great. I have not watched the first season, though. Have you watched it? Either, okay. No. Looks cool. I'm with uh, it. Are you into anime list. at all? Love anime. Okay. Are you into My Hero Academia? Mm, I've not seen any of that. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I, I made a One bet. Piece, amazing. One Dragon Piece Ball Z, amazing. amazing. Uh, I grew up on that. You fan of Naruto? Uh, I just got into it. Okay. I have not. I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, oh my god, I've seen all of them. Yeah. I just got into that's, it. That's that's my favorite yeah. anime. Okay. It, like, it, I mean, the two you just said were like yeah. top five. As well, I grew well. up with Dragon Ball Z, yeah. so that was my life. Yeah, like if I went in a ranking, it'd probably be number one Naruto, number two Dragon Ball, number three would probably be My Hero. I'm like really okay. obsessed with this. Four would probably be One Piece, and then five would probably be Death Note. And I know that's like the most cliche thing to say in anime. It's like those five. It's a top list, right yeah. there. The top five but, uh, in anime. Enjoy Naruto, man. But okay. My Hero, yeah, I love superheroes. Okay, I was, I I made a bet with my friend and I lost it. And he's like, now you got to watch My Hero. And there was four seasons at that point. I binged through it in a week. Dude, Isn't that I was, the best thing when you make a bet and then you have to do something and you actually end up liking what yeah, you had to watch yeah. and see? It's like, and oh. I, and I knew I probably would, but there was a show I wanted him to watch that I knew he would love, Atlanta, with okay. Donald Glover. Such a great movie. Yeah. Talented love, cast. Love, Talented love, love cast. That. And so then I got my hair. I'm like, I'm probably going to watch it. Dude, I got so obsessed with it like for my birthday because my birthday was like a couple of weeks after I had watched it. I, all I asked for was my hero shit. I was mm. like, I want the Funko Pops. I want the shirts. Like, yeah, I'm obsessed me. with this. Yeah. yeah. And I still love the show. I'm going to check it out, dude. Yeah. It's okay. really well done. And then last but not least, it's Demon Slayer's new season. Are you a fan of Demon Slayer? I have Slayer? not seen nothing about no Demon Slayers in my house. But you house. know what it is, I'm guessing. I have done a little research, okay. but uh, yeah, don't know nothing about so, that. I'm okay on Demon Slayer. I'm not yeah. caught up. Uh, I didn't really like the first season. I thought it was decent yeah then i watched the movie mugen train i was obsessed i was like this thing's okay. fucking great and then i started the next season and i was not really a fan of it and it kind of continued from there i am gonna finish it probably once it's done okay i think so it's only watch got it all like at once more, yeah <laughs> so and then last but not least we got some video games uh yeah. just to kind of mention uh hellblade 2 is coming out I haven't played the first one. Do you even know what Hellblade is? I have not played is? the first one either. Yeah. I've seen tra- it looks cool. I've seen it on YouTube. I'm not gonna lie. I watch a lot of gaming yeah, on YouTube to see how it's gonna work, just game. to see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, and it, it kind of entices me. Like, do I want to buy this? Yeah. Do I not want to buy it? But I am a person that is like, try it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Even if it's bad reviews when it comes to movies, TV yep. shows, go out for make yourself. Your own make your own judgment. You come into a decision if if you liked yeah. it. Don't take any critic. Don't take anybody's opinion on the movie. You go and watch it for yourself. With everything in life, yeah. like you go try it for yourself to see if yeah. you like it, because that's yeah, all that matters. Too. Yeah. So excited for that one, and then Paper Mario: The Thousand Year Door finally comes back. Paper to the Mario, Switch. this sounds interesting. Yeah. Th- th- have you ever played any of them? They're like RPG type of style, like Paper turn-table. Mario. Yeah. I played Mario Mario. Oh, dude. I never played. I played Mario Mario, 
uh, Mario Party. Yeah, that's that a, awesome. Amazing Mario Kart. I'm yep, assuming. Mario Kart uh, was amazing. Those are great. But I never paid. I've never played Paper Mario. <sighs> Dude, I gotta look that. I've never even. The, if you got a Switch, this is the best one. They're remastering it. It was from the GameCube. It's awesome. Okay. It is. I'm so excited for this remake. I usually don't care for remakes, yeah. but the second I saw they were remaking this, I'm like, "Fuck yeah, man!" Let's like I've had this it. GameCube copy forever, but like I don't really play my GameCube anymore because you got to hook it up. Do you have a GameCube, I, dude? I am obsessed with old school consoles. Are you? Yeah. So it's crazy to say it's old school. But it's it definitely old yeah. school. It's definitely. But, uh, my, I, mean, I, I had a Nintendo 64, mm -hmm. so no, I, yeah. I still got one of those. That's I love amazing. It. it. But uh, when COVID hit, I was obsessed with like, okay, well, I'm stuck inside. I want to spend money. Right. Like, Come on. and out here, they left all the video game, like retro video game stores open because you can trade and stuff and get money. So right. they were able. So I drove like an hour away to this one store and bought a PS2, a GameCube, a Nintendo 64, like anything I could get my hands on. I definitely went broke. Like, <laughs> I was going to say, was that under $500 for all that? Uh, or was it more than $500? It's probably more. It's Dang. probably more. But, uh, I definitely like it was so cool to like kind of got me through COVID, you yeah. know, like go through some nostalgia and even play games that like I'd always seen as a kid, but like I couldn't afford or yeah. I couldn't buy on my own. And it was kind of cool going through those. Some of those Nintendo games though, Untouched. way too expensive and yeah. untouchable. Double Dash is still my favorite Mario Golden Kart Eye. game. Golden Eye. My, that's my wife's favorite. That game. I want them to remake that one for the new gen. Yeah. Because I play, I'm only like PS5. Yeah. I want to get into PC though. So that's another topic though. I do too. But uh, I got my PS5. I want them to remake GoldenEye. Mm -hmm. Like make this game for us yeah. and, and make it a good game. No, I agree, man. Well, with that, we're on to our last thing to end out the first episode of Into the Geekverse. And I want to ask you, mm -hmm. what is something that you would recommend to play right or to play right now, to watch right now? It could be in theaters. It could be on streaming. What is one thing that is kind of just really stuck out to you the most hmm. and it doesn't have to be from this year it could be towards the end of last year it could be something you just caught up on hopefully i'm saying this right i, I always get this name confused yeah when i say it ghost of tushima oh ghost of tsushima yeah okay from uh the ps playstation amazing dude yeah i had it on the, my ps4 and then i got the ps5 version yeah the most beautiful game storytelling uh, if you don't want a, something that's just a quick game and you really want some storytelling where you got to go and see how beautiful the world is, that's the game. Yeah. Like, I would recommend I everyone that playing that game and just how you get to make the decisions of who you want to be and mm -hmm. how you decide to take on missions. Do you want to do it the wrong way or what people consider the wrong way, but the, it's still the right way? Yeah. So I, it's just such a good game. So are you it's, excited for the movie they're making I, or developing? I want to see how they do it. Yeah. Honestly, you can't go wrong with that. I no. feel like the way that this... It looked like a movie. The game mm -hmm. looked like a movie. A lot of those Sony games have been kind of been like that God of War, Last of Us. It looks I mean, amazing. We saw how Last of Us turned yeah, out. So turned out really good. Like yeah. you see all these different adaptations, and you're like, I mean, Sony's just cranking them out with solo. And I, I'm more like that. I'm more single player yeah. now. Like I don't have time to play Call of Duty 24/7. Yeah. Oh, I like, love Call of Duty. I do too. It keeps me. Yeah. I think yeah. we talked about this. What was your favorite one? Uh, what was it? Um. Was it no? It wasn't Cold War. Cold War, yeah. It was so, that which was is so good which, to me, but a lot of people did not like Cold of, War. I thought it was underrated. I, I actually liked Cold War. It was kind of cool. I thought it was. I good. like the zombies mode specifically yeah. for it. I, I'm big on zombies, so I've like always like kind of jumped into that. But awesome, man. So Ghost of Tsushima. Yes. Out of everything, like if someone were to kind of just take their comfort thing, that's the one thing you would. I just think that's one of yeah. the best games that's been made it's so good in, in the last ten years. Okay. To me. Again, yeah. that's just my opinion. Some people might not yeah. like the game. Okay. But to me, it was one of it, the so. best games I've played, and I, and I still yeah. haven't beat it. I guess to kind of – I, I want to end on one more thing. Yeah. Okay, so I asked you for your favorite movie, your favorite TV series. What's your favorite game then? My favorite game? Yeah. Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft, which one? <laughs> uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. Oh, 3. Is, <laughs> yes. Ah, it's so good. You cannot touch that one. No. That I think, one is so – it was so raw, so – Grand Theft Auto is here. Yeah. And it's to me, it set the stage yeah. of Grand Theft Auto for me because that's when I picked up on Grand mm -hmm. Theft Auto. And like, I'm excited for this new one. Oh, you know, dude. hopefully it's not too dated. Yeah. You know, I hope it's not like too dated because they've been making it for years. And so hopefully the storyline mm -hmm. makes sense because I, when they, the trailer dropped, it seemed like it was a lot of the in the news stories that yeah. they put into the game. And a lot of that stuff's like five years ago, ten years ago. So I'm like, yeah. hopefully it's not too dated. I love that they're going with a female protagonist. Though. I yeah, I'm a little yeah. 
She looks cool. She, she looks, looks cool. She looks cool. But I wonder how is that going to work? Is she mm -hmm. the main character or is it a Bonnie and Clyde I think situation it's Bonnie and Clyde. where you can switch yeah. between the two? Can you throughout? imagine if that's co-op? That would be so dope. I, I would be. That I would be, be down so, for that. What is it? Uh, what was it? What was that game? Is it God of Gears or Gears of God? Gears of War. There it is. I love Gears of War. Co-op. That thing is there. It is. It's yeah, right behind yeah, yeah, yeah. me. <laughs> that was the best. That's one of the best co-op games I've ever played. Yeah, same. It's so and, good. That that game. Uh, it takes two. Recently was okay. incredible, dude. That game. It, <laughs> Me and my wife played it. It's the best co-op game I've ever played. Oh. It's about a, a couple who's getting a divorce, and their daughter wishes for them to get better, and they end up getting shrank and becoming two of their to two of her toys in the backyard. Oh, wow. So it's like, honey, I shrunk the kids, but and their adventure to get back into the house and get changed back into humans. That's kind of a cool. It's very interesting. It's phenomenal. It one game of the year, I think like two, three years ago. Oh, I've so, never heard of it. So yeah, I looked that up now. Really cool. Now that's what I yeah, gotta look up. It definitely, man. Well, that's where we're gonna leave you guys with Into the Geek first. And before we get to going... I mean, well, you asked me, what was your favorite game? Oh, my favorite game? Uh, the Last of Us. Really? Uh, yeah, the the first... Both. Like, okay. I, I just think of them as one giant game for me. Uh, if I play one, I gotta play two. Vice versa. I can't start two without playing one. That's what you would recommend everybody to play. Uh, it's very depressing. The but, Last of Us. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> if you haven't yet, I mean, the show it's a good is incredible. Game. It's such um, a good game. But that, that's the one game that like kind of transcended to me and showed me like video games can tell a story. Yeah. Which I never thought beforehand because I was just Call of Duty kid. I was online multiplayer and all that stuff. You and didn't play Grand Theft Auto? I played Grand Theft Auto, but I, I just ran around killing people. Okay, well, did you not part. complete the story? I did for that's the newer ones. Story, right? <laughs> it is, all, especially for, I really like right. Nico Bellic's story. But uh, yeah, and I mean, if I'm not going to pick as a depressing game, I don't know, it's tough, man. Zelda? Then, I like Zelda a lot. Yeah. I like the last one a lot. Uh, but Gears of War is like one of my favorite games. Such a good Mass game. Effect, the whole trilogy. Yeah. God, dude. That that trilogy stresses me out because I just want to keep every single person alive through and all you of can't. it. No, by the yeah. third game, it's like you keep everyone alive in two and it's like, nah, fuck that. Yeah. You, you're going to lose We're every single the person. game in yeah. this one. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. That's some good choices. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank yeah. you. And well, thank you so much for joining me on the first ever episode, man. Where can people find you? What do you have coming up? Please shout out your social medias, everything that you can. Uh, yeah, so my social media is The Daryl Show, at The Daryl Show. It's on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of all I got. Uh, is Instagram right now. Okay. That's what I'm working with. Uh, I'm going to bring back a few other platforms. So you have on. YouTube right now. Too. I do have a YouTube. I yeah. think it's just my name, Daryl okay. J. Cunningham. That's my YouTube. So uh, trying to get that off the ground too, mm -hmm. working on some things. But honestly, just a lot of cool projects. Yeah. It, it's just trying to create and you let your creativity take over. Yeah. And that's honestly, I'm like a person who I throw noodles to the wall and whatever sticks. And then I'm like, okay, I'll go with that. But yeah. if you don't keep doing, trying to make yourself better, trying new things, then you'll never know what you're capable mm -hmm. of. And so that's all I'm doing. That's my journey is to try new stuff and to get out there and make an impact and yeah. a change in the city and state that I call home, Arizona. I love that, man. Yeah. I love that. And of course, you guys know me. You guys can find me on Into the Geekverse. You can find me on Zach Pope Reviews on YouTube. Love talking movies, TV, games, and of course, all sorts of other things. You got tons of other podcasts coming on here. You got Into the Geekverse. You got... Uh, Pope Cinema Circle, which will be audio only, me and my wife talking. That one should be filmed soon. Uh, Hot Mike Gaming, uh, Rest Side Rambles, which is just me and my friend talking everything. Literally, the last episode we talked about Arizona and the paranormal and ghosts and aliens and stuff oh, like that. They exist. Play. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, we talked about some stories on that. And then uh, at the end of the month, you'll get Flicks and Friends, which is me uh, having someone react to something for the first time. I don't know what that is yet, but we'll figure that out soon. And Daryl's definitely going to come on there and talk about Indiana Jones. But yeah, I'm going to go see it for the first time. Yeah, man. Yeah. So other than that, guys, of course, stay classy as always and stay safe and keep watching movies, TV and playing games. Bye, guys.